that uh, we can and we can start the recording. So thank you, Leanne. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. So as I was saying, my name is Leah Harrington and I'm the Living Well Coordinator in CH09. And I'm going to be talking um, to you today about our fantastic programme called Building Better Caregivers, um, which is a programme purely for um, caregivers. I'll just get my presentation there. Perfect. Everyone can see that okay, yeah? Brilliant. Yep. So I just love this picture because we have so many caregivers out there. They all come in different um, forms, whether you're a grandparent, friend, neighbor, family carer, you know, for a spouse or your best friend. So it's just to say this program is open to all different types of carers. You don't have to be a primary carer, secondary carer. You could be someone that would be maybe looking in on a friend or a neighbor or anything like that. So it's just really nice to acknowledge all the different types of wonderful carers that we have out there. So a little bit about our um, Building Better program, the structure. So it is evidence-based and it's peer-led um, in format. So which, which means then that we have two trained leaders, one of both of whom are non-health care professionals and are currently or have been caregivers themselves for both the in-person and our virtual um, workshops. So building caregivers, building better caregivers is for those who is caring for a child, teenager, young adult, um, a parent, family member, a loved one or friends. So classes are highly um, participatory where, where mutual um, support and success is built on the participants' confidence in their ability to manage their caregiving tasks and to maintain a fulfilling um, life as well. And then due back in 2019, due to COVID, we moved um, to online via WebEx and now we're running all our programs um, on Zoom. So the Living Well, the Building Better Caregivers program is a free online program and it is delivered over um, seven workshops. So our first um, workshop we call um, Session Zero. So that's really to make sure that everyone can get online okay. If anyone's having IT issues, we can help out. We give a little brief overview of Zoom and like what features we use and that. And then secondly, then we just give a brief overview of the program itself. You know, all um, caregivers attend together and it is for adults who are over 18 and it's not suitable for anyone with significant intellectual impairment or with advanced dementia. And then is a max of 18 people per face to face group or a max of 12 people online. So um, and it's also lovely then for other carers to meet carers as well, because sometimes being a carer can be quite isolating and you might meet someone. So maybe for a year or two years or it could be like a couple of months. So it's really nice to be able to meet other people like like ourselves who would be carers. So the program is, so the aim of our program then is learn skills that may lead to the stress reduction of the caregiver and their care partner. And it helps give caregivers um, to manage their health as best they can, because often as caregivers, we often put ourselves last. We look after the person we're caring for rather than sort of also caring for ourselves, which is really, really important. It also aims to help you to control um, the symptoms and help them to live um, as well as possible sort of with their health condition. And that's either for the carer giver or the, um, the care um, person themselves. So what does it um, do? So it supports the de um, development of enhancing self-advocacy, um, um, which is a person's belief in their ability to complete a task or to achieve a goal. And that would, we'd look at that with our action planning. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about action planning as our presentation goes on. So it's improving health behaviours. So getting proper exercise, physical activity, healthy eating, nutritious food, and um, practicing good sleep hygiene, taking medications as prescribed and working with um, your um, health um, providers. And it's also really important as, as caregivers as well, that we also sort of, be able to get a little bit of exercise that we do look after our own diet and that we do sort of get proper sleep time and everything like that and it's not just and um, our care partner the end that that we're focusing on so it's improving social engagement so being engaged with others in your community the ability to develop and maintain friendships communication creating boundaries and friendships and relationships and having a supportive network of family and friends and i know um, from past experience on our programs having that supportive network of family and friends some carers mightn't have that so it's really good on this program that you meet um, some um, people along the way that develop friends and as, um, a couple of past participants have said, oh, I found my tribe, which I thought was really lovely. 
Um, also, it looks at reducing um, feeling of low mood, depression and anxiety. So prioritizing sleep as is interconnected with our mental health to stay active and go outside. Daily exercise has been shown to help alleviate symptoms of anxiety, depression and focus on healthy eating, practice and relaxation and understanding our emotions then as well. So this is just over the next six slides, what we're going to be covering in each work and week when you attend the program. So the first activity would be an introduction to the workshop. Then we'd have our group introductions. We have thoughtful breathing, tools for improving and fatigue. So then we'd have our break in between that, challenging care partner behaviors, introduction to our action plans, and then we'd have our closing. So action planning exercise is just really, really important. And it's something that we do each week um, throughout the six weeks. So the action planning exercise is something that you want to do. And it's not something that you feel that your friends or family want you to do or a doctor or anything like that, but it's something that you really want to do. It's achievable so that you say if we were running a program on a Thursday, that you made an action plan that you'd be able to come back the following Thursday and give feedback on how um, that went for you. Action specific. So you answer the questions like the what, the how much, when, how often. The confidence level of a seven or more and always like um, ourselves as leader, we would start with our own action plans so then we can model like how it's done. And this actually can be quite hard for our participants to do, especially those who would be carers find sometimes they say I don't have 10 minutes I don't have 20 minutes so it's really sort of um challenging that even if you could take five minutes to do something and it's just something for you for yourself to do so mindfulness exercise is often a, a really good one or um sometimes people might pop next door to the neighbor and just have a chat so it's really like anything that you want to do but it's just something that we we sort of really encourage people to do <clears throat> um, and that um and it's just giving you that time back to yourself to do something that you really really want to do so in week two, we have the feedback um, from our action plans. We have the problem solving. Then we have using your behavior diary. Then we have a 20 minutes break. We look at dealing with triggers, planning for a challenging behavior. Then we'd be looking at a healthy you. Then we're making an action plan. And then we'd have our closing. So week three, we'd have our feedback again on our action plans. We look at problem solving difficult behaviors. We'd have our break, dealing with difficult thoughts and emotions, getting a good night's sleep, making our action plan, and then we'd have our closing. So week four, we'd have our feedback with the, our action plan. So you can see the pattern developing over the weeks. Feedback on our care partner's challenging behavior. That's one thing that would come up a lot would be um, carers saying like sort of, how do I manage my care partner's challenging behavior? And that's sometimes it's not their partner. It's actually the condition that they have is resulting in that challenging behavior. And that can be very, very difficult um, um, for carers and sort of being able sort of to separate um, the two then as well. So that's something um, we do look at making decisions and <clears throat> we have our break and um, getting help or asking for help. And where do we go to get help? Stop unhelpful thinking, making our action plan, and then we'd have our closing. In week five, we'd have our feedback on our action plans, helpful thinking, medication uses, firing, finding and hiring help, break, future planning and legal issues, relaxation, body scan, making um, an action plan, and then our closing. And then in week six, we'd have our feedback of our action plans for that week, reviewing difficult care partners' emotions, working with the healthcare systems and the healthcare providers. We'd have our break. We'd have our look at communication skills, then looking back and planning for the future. So that is when you'd be looking at making an action plan, say, for the next two months, four months or six months and how you're going to do that. So it's really like putting the skills that you've learned from the program together and being able to continue doing that after the program ends. Um, has finished and then we, we would have our closing then. So the course, so the core skills would be making decisions, action planning and our problem solving. So other techniques that we'd be talking about would be self-care methods to improve caregivers health, skills that may lead to stress reduction for caregivers and their care partner, dealing with deaf, difficult emotions, managing different care partners behaviour, 
planning for the future, finding resources, improving communication skills with family and friends, looking about family meetings, communicating with healthcare professionals and the healthcare system, and much more. And like the family meetings, I always remember um, one past participant was saying, you get a fabulous book when you do this programme. She left it out on the kitchen table on a chapter that she thought would, you know, spot the interest of the, uh, the family, and it did. So to that then, the family sat down that evening and they were able to tell her how they were feeling, their fears, their worries. And then she was able to say how she was um, sort of feeling and then the communication skills she um, found during the programme. And what materialised from that was then sort of every two weeks, they'd have a family meeting together to sit down, have a chat to see how they were feeling, how she was feeling, the fears, the worries. And um, I got a message from her there um, there are three months ago so she would have done the program two years ago and they're still doing that and it's still working really really well so she said it was just brilliant that it just opened up things there was that like that pressure cooker had to off the boil and she said it was fantastic so um so the skills that are taught and techniques do really help you on on a day-to-day -day basis so here we have our symptom cycle and our self-management tools. So there we have our stress cycle. So we have difficult um, and challenging behaviors, poor communication, difficult emotions, not enough time, difficult decisions to be made, fatigue, poor sleep, and then the uncertain future. And like they go in a nice little circle, but as we all know, they can cross zigzag and, and, and that. So then we have our caregiver's toolbox. And in that, we have our behavior diary. We have um, taught for breathing, getting help, understanding emotions, planning, staying healthy, sleep. We have the problem solving, the decision making and the action planning. And these are the three main cores um, of, of our program, managing um, fatigue, communication and using your mind. So say if we're looking at sleep and how we could plan around sleep. So if we are getting sort of a good night's sleep or even an hour or two better than we were, that does help break that system and that the difficult emotions mightn't seem as um, difficult. Your communication would be a lot better because you've had that little rest, you've had an extra bit of sleep. You might be able to deal with the challenging or difficult behaviors that, that come and that those difficult decisions mightn't seem that difficult because you've, you have been able to get that sleep. And we all know that when we don't get enough sleep, like it, it just really, really sort of ruins all different aspects. You know, during the day, you can make it, it an awful lot worse then as well. And then sort of like the communication again, like when you look at your communication, that really sort of helps then being able to talk about those difficult emotions that we're feeling. If you don't have enough time, you might be able to say, oh, I'm feeling X, Y, and Z, and I don't have enough time. So that will help you to communicate what you would ac actually need then as well. And not being afraid to ask for it. And it's not a sign of weakness or anything like that, that, that you ask for these helps or anything like that. It is really good self-management. So um, just a little bit of information about the Living Well programme. Because a lot of, excuse me, a lot of people would ask us, like, where does the programme come from? So the Self-Management Resource Centre is a culmination of 38 years of research and programme development. And actually, it's actually now 40 years of research. And it's all focused on the goal of helping people better manage their chronic health conditions. So at um, the first one there, um, Oh, sorry, I've gone on. Kate Lorick um, went to SMRC and then in 1979, the arthritis um, management program was completed and the first 14 leaders were trained. Then in 1993, we had the chronic disease cell management program and that was um, completed in 1996. And we also run this program within CH09 and it's called Living Well with Chronic um, Health Conditions. And then in 1994, in response to the HIV and AIDS crisis, the CDSMP was adapted to use for people who are um, HIV positive. And then in 1995, Dr. Sandra Lafort in St. John's, Newfoundland, adapted the uh, um, ASMP um, to use for people with chronic pain. And then in 2004, we and um, the, the Diabetes Self-Management Programme was developed. And then 2010, the Building Better Caregivers Programme was developed. And then just three weeks ago then as well, I've gotten updated slides on the programme from the SMRC. So even though it was first introduced in 2010, they do 
actually sort of update their program so that because it is evidence based they feed back on the evidence that they have created so that they can update um, these programs in 2012 we had the cancer um, thriving and surviving was developed in 2017 we had the self management resource center um, is created and the workplace chronic disease self management program was developed and then in 2020 due to covid we pivoted to the remote um, delivery so we do run the cancer thriving surviving program um, as well as well as the Living Well with Chronic Pain program too within CH09. So just a little t Living Well timeline. So as we're saying, in 1978, um, Stanford um, was developed. In 2005, we had six people um, from Ireland, from different organisations, go to Stanford and they were trained um, to be um, leaders within the Living Well programme. In 2019, we had the Natural Lot Lottery and also Slanchic Care um, came on board. We had then um, research done with um, Trinity um, College then as well, which was um, fantastic. And in 2020, then, as we're saying, due to COVID, we pivoted then online delivery. And we also find then as well for the Building Better Caregivers program, the online version is an awful lot better because it means that you don't have to get someone in to mind your caregiver. You don't have that worry. And it's also great, say, like during if you're doing the program and your care partner needed you, all you have to do is mute yourself, turn off your camera, go off and look after your care partner. And then you can come back on, switch on your camera and then um, continue on. So it's that flexibility and like that's no problem at all if that happens because this is, is a pro program for caregivers. Yeah, and just uh, I just think this wheel is really, really good. So the, what type of day are you having today? It uh, changes by the hour, but sometimes it could change by the minute or every half an hour. So you could be having an easy day, a challenging day. You could be feeling really good, feeling really optimistic. You could be feeling a little guilty because maybe you're just out sort of getting a little bit of self-care for yourself. You could be feeling frustrated, feeling the love, approaching burnout, which burnout, as we all know, is very huge for caregivers. You could be having fun and then you could be back having an easy day. Or you could have a day where you, you could start feeling a little bit guilty. So it's just to remember sort of all those emotions. And I'm sure we've all experienced them at some time or another. And sometimes you could maybe experience them all in sort of um, one day, just depending on, on how you, your day is going. But I just think it's really good to know that you're not alone in feeling those feelings as well. And like you meet other care carers as well, who would be in very much the same boat as well. So this is just a little overview of what is covered each week. And it's a bit like, like the slides that I was showing you. So you have the overview of the caregiving and the workshop. You have signal breathing. So this would be in week one. You'd have improved um, improving fatigue, challenging care partners, behaviours and the action planning. And as you can see, the action planning goes straight across for those six weeks. So if ever like you were saying, I wonder what we're going to be covering in week three, you just go to this handout and then you go, OK, it's going to be challenging care partner's behaviour, action plans, feedback and sharing, problem solving, you know, looking at difficult thoughts and emotions and getting a good night's sleep then as well. So um, so you always know whereabouts you, you are. And this is called homework, but it's not homework because we don't check it or anything like that. This is just recommended breeding for each of the end uh, the sessions. So each of the sessions, say we're in session three, it sort of shows you about your behavior diary, like what pages is that going to be in your book, looking at decision making, sort of what's that about, your action planning, about contacting your buddy, and then the optional reading then as well. So it's just to have there for you. But as we say, it's not homework. We don't go checking it or, or anything like that. So. I just think this is great. This is just a feedback that we've gotten um, from participants sort of in the past. And I think it really shows you like what the program is about. Um, I've definitely learned some valued um, lessons during this um, program. The book is a brilliant resource to have also. So thank you. I love the course. I don't feel as isolated now meeting lovely people, meeting um, others like me. It covered lots of ground. The supporting documentation is fantastic. I really think I'm a better caregiver for having been through the process. Thank you so much for the wonderful course. As mentioned to you before, that the fact that it was made online made it so much more accessible for me, especially given the nature of our roles as um, carers beside COVID. I feel that I can be um I feel that it can be a barrier for some if they have to travel and to get someone else to cover for them to look after their care partner while taking part in the course. 
It would be my wish that this course will be made available to all caregivers. It was a fantastic experience and so worthwhile. I use my Thursday night attendance at these WebEx meetings as my quality time for me. And just to say that this program is available for all caregivers outside of um, Dublin then as well, because currently we're the only CHO9 area that's offering this program. So we are able to open it up for, um, because of that. The section on what would happen if I couldn't um, continue to provide care was one I hadn't thought about. So it was good that it came up for discussion on the course and at home. I definitely have learned some valued lessons and tools which has equipped me to be a better caregiver. The book is a brilliant resource to have also. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed the course and I'm very glad I did it. It was very um, informative and very thought provoking and it made me look at myself and to check was I looking after me, which again is just really, really important. It has given me many tools to use at home and at work, as well as being able to share my knowledge with colleagues. It has also helped me in managing my stress and um, time in, in these giving times, but thankfully things are starting to look up. It gave me the tools to navigate um, the tough days when I had unhelpful thoughts or when my care partner's behaviour is frustrating me. I got good ideas for, re for relaxation, staying healthy and exercise, which is also good for my well-being and uh, mental health. So there's some endorsements about the programme then as well. So this course targets the skills that keep our caregivers safe, effective and being able to take care of themselves. It takes the, um, it takes the isolation out of which can be very a lonely role and encourages them to learn from each other. I cannot um, recommend it highly enough. And that's from Dr. Jennifer winson Aradic, who's principal clinical psychologist in Beaumont Hospital. And she's also um, a leader on this programme as well. I'm absolutely delighted to support this program in an, any every way possible. I have a great confidence when I recommend this program to patients or colleagues, which is enhanced by your personal touch and the support you offer for people referred. And um, you're a fantastic advocate for this program. So that would be directed at the Living Well team. So that was from Dr. Um, Siobhan McHale, um, who is the consultant um, liaison psychiatrist in Beaumont Hospital as well. So just to say that our next program date is going to be happening in um, on February the 7th in 2024 to March um, 20th. And that's going to be on from 7 to 9.30 for the seven weeks. And that's on um, Zoom. And if you have any questions or you want to register, um, there's my details there. But Marissa will be able to send them on, on to you. And we already have um, one or two people booking a place for that program sort of already. So this is where I turn off my slides. And if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to ask. I hope it wasn't too slide heavy or anything like that, but it's just nice to see sort of slides and more sort of inf information in that. And I hope I didn't bore you all too much either, so. No, not bored at all. Thank you so much for that, Leah. Um, very informative.